you know what? Keith told me that the last race that won, I think it was at Columbus, Indiana, and uh, I think it was Alan Barr who won yeah. the thing, and you asked him not to bring that back <laughs> where, where, where you were running. That's what he told me anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, we sell that, and my wife, don't sell that car. You were winning with it. Why would you want to sell it? I said, well, I, whatever I said. I don't remember. But anyway, we sold that thing to Keith, and he put... Uh, Alan Barr in it had a race on the half mile at Columbus. Yeah. No <laughs> we go up there, and I think Alan's running about third. Dick Gaines was, well, I, th I think he was leading it and got into the fence. And uh, did he get up? Yeah, he got upside down. But anyway, beyond all that, the brakes went out on the car on the old Big Bertha. Well, once Alan hauled that thing off in the corner and the brakes wasn't there, oh my God, this thing will go around this corner. <laughs> well, he just killed everybody after that. <laughs> That's funny. I love that. What, what uh, so you didn't build the car, right? Someone else no, not built the chassis? Yeah, yes. yeah. The boy, uh, two, they built two cars. One, that one, and another one from themselves at the same time. But it was built, what, mid-60s, maybe? Yeah, 67, I think, or right, yeah. The the car, the big Bertha car, I sold it to Keith Ford, mm -hmm. had a name to build me another frame. I got gotcha. you. For a small block, okay. Once I went to for a new frame, a new engine and all that, tell you the truth, didn't have the money. So I sold that car and took that money and put into a new frame and a 400 cubic inch small block and uh, built my own car, built mm -hmm. my own frame and uh, went into the, how would you put it? Leon Hubble suggest advice, lighter, not heavier. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> so, then on. Really uh, super interesting. What, 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 the restoration of the car, would it mean anything to you at all? Do you care anymore? I mean. Oh yeah, I'd love to see Keith redo it or somebody. He'd probably it. love to see you redo it. Oh. <laughs> that tight ass wouldn't pay me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well we'd have to work something out here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> would that be a big deal for you to see that all prettied up and shined up and well, you know? I have some pictures when it looked pretty good. I can look at them as is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the car has such a cool history with all the, the drivers it had. That thing, Larry Cannon's brother, Steve. Yeah, I remember him from okay. uh, from Illinois. Yes, they're having a race at Danville, Columbus. Illinois. And on the half mile, there's mm -hmm. no fairground. And I put, see, did Larry you say Cannon Metropolis? Boom Boom was Larry, right? R Larry Boom Boom, yep. Okay, and, and his, his brother, Steve. Correct. Okay, Miller was working at Bloomington uh, at the stone quarry up there as a mechanic, and he couldn't go, and so I got uh, Boom Boom's brother in it down there. And we was leading that race on that old half mile. I had a brand new uh, Farstone Digger Diamond, Double Step Diamond, and that thing was throwing a rooster tail you could not believe. <laughs> he had a half a lap on him in about 10 laps, and that thing, for some known reason, the ring and pinion broke. The ring gear broke in half, locked the rear end up. Oh, Lord. I mean, <laughs> Kenneth said, well, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> this thing will win every race in the world if you can, get it, if you can keep it together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it seemed like it almost did for a while there, right. for a few years. I mean, <laughs> you know, Larry Miller... I, I wanted to, I'd like to talk to his, I know his widow is still alive. Yeah. She would be interesting to talk to. Yeah. Um, yeah, Larry had uh, four kids, and he ran our car for quite well, four, five, six years, seven years, whatever it was. And we go to Salem, and with Big Bertha, Larry wins a race at Salem in it, and... We, he went to Dayton, Ohio, or there on that track, and one there. And at Dayton, he said, well, I'll tell you one thing. He said, well, go ahead and put a windshield or something on this for me. And the air is getting under my helmet, and the, the thing is choking me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. So anyway. <laughs> but after that, I don't know, Larry kind of 
lost interest or something. You know, family actually yeah. so long you got four kids and Jesus Christ, a couple of fatalities in racing kind sure. of you know, changes everything. Sure. Calvin Gilstrap at Bloomington yeah. and I know you kinda lump I don't wanna I don't know if that's the right word, but Dick Gaines and Steve Kins were probably in a similar category. In fact you said once that if either one was in your car they'd beat the other. Um, did Larry Miller get close to that category? Was he right in there with Dick Gaines and Steve Kinzer? Well, you know, with with Big Bertha, yeah. neither one of them could outrun him, so I guess he, <laughs> I guess he was. Yeah. Uh, of course, there again, I think, at uh, Evansville and uh, Perrigan, uh, Larry just had a knack for them tracks for some reason or other. And, <laughs> and like Steve, Dad, Bob, Kinzer, mm -hmm. he said, well, I can tell you one thing, if they pull in that, that car and Larry Miller's driving, he just well run for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the truth. Yeah. And they knew it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and it wasn't like Bob Kinzer. I mean, he was a wheel man too, you oh, know, yeah. back in his day. Bob, he, he drove, you know, around here whenever the racing first started. I mean, he had the old, uh, Stock cars with a roll cage, a jalopy, would they be called now? Yeah, yeah. And it was is what everybody ran. Sure, sure. And uh, but uh, Carl Kinzer has Tom countless Bi hours wrapped around this chassis. Tom Bigelow drove the car. Tom Bigelow, wow. Again, his frame has dropped down for the big block. And on this car, this frame is so narrow. On the side of the block, the starter side where the starter mounts, you got to cut the side of the block off. So for it to fit down between the frame rails. They, the chrome plating places tell me they can't chrome it because of all the pit marks and the sandblast would show up unless you sand it baby ass smooth. Miller, people, hmm? people say, well, why don't you just duplicate and build a new cage? And the reason I don't and wouldn't want to because this all this tubing has been stick welded. Nowadays, a heliod. Mm -hmm. And it's all been stick welded, and it's just kind of a character. Somehow, somewhere, somebody, I gotta get the case re -chrome. If you notice, ooh, this cage sets in pockets. It's what they call a bolt on cage. Bolt on cage? Wow. You can take the bolts out of it, and uh, somebody's already taken that bolt out. I didn't. But so you can see what the bolt goes through. Uh huh. And uh, take the cage off of it and just take it somewhere and get it plated. Machine. This is an iconic Carl Kinzer sprint car that goes back to the beginning of his sprint car career. This this would be one to restore. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, sitting in the grandstands there and I had some drunk come up to me. He said, you still got a birthday, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, you want to sell it? And I said, no. He said, I'll give you 10,000 right now for it. I said, are you kidding? I said, why well, do I want to buy the tires and they're, <laughs> and they're weather crack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this car not only ran all these dirt tracks across Indiana, it ran Winchester. It ran Salem. I mean, you, you know, you made it worked on the pavement and it worked on the dirt. Back then, there wasn't a whole lot of difference in the setup for them. No. The dirt, yeah. This would be neat to see it restored. Wow, what a job, yeah. though. At least you still have the chassis. It'll get done. Maybe, maybe not for me. I just wish to. I had the ambition. I wish I had to drive it like Carl's got. Well, it's already been done. Yeah. And I know Carl has done just as much or more manual labor and stuff through the years that I have. But I shouldn't have the excuse. I guess I'm lazy. <laughs> Carl is. I I don't, I don't know. You don't strike me as a lazy man. No, I haven't been, but I'm getting that way. But yeah, well, I mean, we're all getting up there in years, and we can't do what we used to do. I got, I got all the parts. For this car? For this car. Wow. Yeah. See, this car, Butch Wilkerson crashed it and driving for Carl on that mile track at Springfield. He stuck it in the guardrail probably 120, 130 mile an hour and broke the front end, twisted it all around. And I already had made the deal with Carl to buy the car. So when I, <laughs> I heard about the wreck, I went down to his place and uh, looked at it, and uh, it was all twisted around. He said, don't worry, I'll fix it. And he did. 
deal. I guess I'm surprised that Carl Kinzer sold it, you know. That he didn't have some sort of attachment his to it. His, his wife, Diane, bless her heart, she's a great lady. Uh, she liked to crucify him for selling it. Someone said, she didn't tell me, someone said she wanted to take it, set it in the front yard, and plant flowers in it. <laughs> That's a great idea. The first time I ran this was at Columbus on a half mile, and I had never drove a half mile. Plus, drove a race car that had to get up and go that this has got, and I went out there to hot lap, and I actually got butterflies. And I told the guy that was helping me, Big Dave Feeding, I said, you know, I don't think I'm, I can do it tonight. I said, uh, I need to drive this car on a few short tracks, quarter miles, and carry in three eighths, and get used to it before I go to a half mile. And uh, Dave said, well, Alan Barth walking around here, and he don't have a ride. Well, I knew Alan, but I didn't know him that well. And I went out to Alan, I said, do you want to drive my car at Big Bertha tonight? And he looked, and he said, God, yeah, I'll drive it. He said, I followed that thing enough times. He said, I'd like to drive it. So, went out there and of course he, I don't know where he started in the feature, but he was sure leading it and going away. And Dick Gaines and Carl had two new cars there. Dick Gaines was driving one of them and Butch Wilkinson was driving the other one. And uh, Dick Gaines flipped out of the ballpark trying to catch Bertha. He landed in the top of a cattle barn off the track. Wow. He sat there for a minute. Then the roof caved in. Oh my Lord. <laughs> that's that's movie material. So after they restarted the race, my Butch took over a second chasing the bar and Big Bertha here and that he couldn't catch him. And, Never got him. And bar won the race. It was the last race held on the Columbus half mile track. Wow. And uh, That's a cool piece of history. So Carl, Carl come over there, I think, Victory Circle, you know, they were taking trophies or pictures and all that stuff. And Carl come over there and anyway, Diane come down out of the grandstands. Carl's wife. Uh-huh. Said, I told you that old SOB wasn't wore out. Evidently <laughs> he told her he sold it because it was wore out. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, she said, I told you that old SOB wasn't wore out. <laughs> That's then, so cool. Raised hell. And uh, Carl come up to me later that, that night and he said, don't run that car where I'm at anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what a cool history. Old Bertha. Big Bertha, yeah. Big Bertha, I'm sorry. But I keep saying Old Bertha, but it's Big Bertha. Big Bertha. He I mean, it's named because of the big engine. Gaines spent a lot of time between that chassis. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, what an, I'd love to see it restored. Miller. Miller's the one that <laughs> had the most seat time in it. But... Yeah, Larry Miller. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But after. I don't know what happened between Carl and Miller. Nothing serious, because I know they, they remain good friends. I think he just went off to be a family man, be a dad, and... I know several times down here at Perrigan, when Gaines had come down and driving Big Birkin, Carl and Dick Gaines, for some reason, were getting an argument about something, and Gaines would just storm off, he'd quit. That or Carl would fire him, so... Dick had come over to me and he said, let me drive your car. Let me drive Big Bertha tonight. I said, I don't know. I mean, I let him talk me into it. <laughs> and that happened about three times. And there wasn't one time, nothing against Carl or Carl's car, but there was not. Carl, I'll tell you the same thing. Every time Dick Gaines got in my car and Carl had to find somebody else to drive his that night, uh, Dick beat him every beat, beat, beat him every time. Beat him every time. Yeah. yeah. Cool story. But. One time, I qualified it for a 100 lap feature down here. And I had third fast time, so I got to start. Down here, where down here? Paragon. Paragon, okay, right here. So I would have got to start, uh, or third place, I'm sorry, second row. Diaz, I think, that night was driving for, or uh, Dick was driving for Diaz Wilson, and it lost an engine or rear end or something in the hot lap. So he come over to me and said, let me drive Bertha tonight, Bertha tonight. That's when Ricky, Hot, Ricky Hood was winning a lot of races down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, Dick, I said, I start second row. I don't care. He said, he said well, I can win this 100 lapper. And so I let him talk me into it. Of course, he had to start on tail. Changing drivers, he goes to tail. 100 lapper at Paragon? Yeah, they used to run 150 lap. Wow. But anyway, uh, on the first lap, I, was, I went to the infield. 
the first lap I watched him come out of four. I took the green flag and come out of four down the front stretch. Then I watched him go down the back stretch. And then I, but I had my back to turn three and four. Well, there was 22 cars in the feature and he'd already passed 11 cars in three quarters of a lap. Wow. Going into turn three, I guess from the pictures I seen later, I didn't see it. I had my back turned to that turn. But anyway, uh, according to the picture, he got it up on, went in so hard, got it up on two wheels, bicycled it. And when he got it back down, when it would come down real hard, then it really took off. And he rolled three or four times off of turn three and four down there. And I went down there and the uh, shocks were sticking out the tars, <laughs> all kind of stuff broken. I said, you know, Dick, I said, I never did see a race one on the first lap. <laughs> anyway, he told me when he wanted to drive it, he said, and he, I let him drive it and told him he could. He said, I ain't going to lift. I said, now, you ain't got the warrants for that in this car. He said, watch me. He said, I ain't going to let off the gas. Well, evidently, he didn't. <laughs> and evidently, he turned over. <laughs> yeah, several times. <laughs> he passed 11 cars out of 22 and three quarters of a lap. Wow. And then he flipped. Then he flipped. <laughs> I'd like to see him finish it. He said, I told you I wasn't going to lift. And I said, no, I told you it wouldn't work either. <laughs> well, you were both right. <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I hadn't had my back turned to that corner. But I was. I turned to watch him come down the straightaway, see how many car, more cars he was going to pass, and see if he's going to take the lead on the first lap. But <laughs> He was heading that way. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you have one big Bertha memory that stands out above any other? Or I know there are a lot of good ones. <laughs> well, probably the night they beat us at Columbus. Yeah. My wife wouldn't let me hear that, live that down for two weeks. Because you had just sold the car? Or? Yeah, first race. <laughs> first race? After I sold it. And Alan Barr and whooped you guys. We got upside down and Alan won in the car. Oh, wow. That's... So, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's all I heard on the way home. What did you sell that? You're gonna be stupid. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> is, she, is she still telling you that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> over that. Over that, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, I, I know that it sounds like that, that the secret was, was motor, motor, motor. You know, the fuel injection, the big port. Um, a chassis seemed to work pretty good too, man. There had to yeah. been something there, I mean. Well. Back in and I know you made a lot of your own changes to it, or yeah. you, you back, modified. Back and... in the day, whenever uh, we ran, we ran that car, and everybody drove. The race car drivers all worked forty-hour week. Sure. The owners worked a forty-hour week. Okay, it wasn't like going out and buying a fifty thousand dollar motor and put it in because you didn't like the other one. Now. That's kind of what happened, but back then, nobody, whatever you took off the season with, that's kind of what you ran, because everything was on a budget and all this, and, and racing for $300 to win a feature, right? and giving the driver 40% or 50% and the owner, all he'd do is grinning, <laughs> <laughs> because he won. Sure, sure. <laughs> so it, it, it was four different times but um, it, it, was, it was definitely gratifying. Well, I sure appreciate your time today, Carl. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate you. Yeah. Very grateful. Yeah. You know, racing's been, it's been good, you know. It oh. changed a lot, but it's, it's still good, and I think it was better 25 years ago. <laughs> or even before, yeah. yeah I, I do, too. You know. It's... Uh, I would, well, like the old saying, time marches on and changes everything. That doesn't mean we still can't tell the story of the legend of Big Bertha. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. She was a Jew, still is, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen her for, oh my, in action for a long time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Larry Miller, he was, he was great in that car, I'll tell you. Well, anybody that run it will run good. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but it was the gift of the time. <laughs>